Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are finally back on Subnautica and like I promised last time, we are going to be reading out all the data logs that we got from the primary containment facility in the active lava zone that we were at last time. Now we are nearing the end of this series, which is why I was trying to uh, take a few days to figure out what I want to do. And one of them is definitely read through the data, obviously beat the game, which will take probably another two episodes because we might have to build the rocket as well. So there's two things there straight away. Um, and I also do also want to investigate the dunes because I haven't actually made a video on the dunes properly. I've done one in the uh, void, which was kind of a bit of a joke video, like a meme video. But I did visit the void, so we've covered the void at the moment. I might make a base there in the future, who knows. Um, but overall, I think we are nearing the end of this wonderful Subnautica series. So I just want to say thank you all so much for the support on it so far. And I hope you've enjoyed the last few episodes that are left. Uh, I might make more depending on what you guys want. Because if you want to see more things in this, then I'll do it. And honestly, I might even play through the second one, Subnautica Below Zero, again. Because the first time I played through it, I didn't talk throughout any of it. So, you know, there there is that as well. So do let me know in the comments what you'd like to see if you want to see different games. I am installing Red Dead Redemption 2 at the moment, just to mess around on. I uh, probably won't do a playthrough of that, but I'll probably do some videos on it. Uh, just like, maybe some side quests, or maybe just some funny moments and stuff. Kind of like GTA. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, artifacts. Uh, these are all the artifacts we found. I'm going to read all of these this episode, and maybe cover some other areas as well. Alright, alien building block. This rock-like object features organic as well as mechanical parts, and there is some genetic and technological crossover with the design of the self-warping constructs encountered elsewhere, which is like the warpers basically, I think. It appears to serve no purpose in its current state, and is awaiting some kind of activation sequence. Materials such as this have been a fundamental building block of the aliens' technology or even of the aliens themselves. Interesting. Now we found a lot of these in the place, and that was something. I, I guess that's how the the resources that they used to make everything that they've built. I d I'm not sure on that, but it's interesting nonetheless. Alien carbon. This carbon is hundreds of thousands of years old, and uh, sorry, and made from an unrecognized natural fiber grown on an unknown planet. It bears striking resemblance to the old Earth yin yang symbol. Two competing theories may explain the similarity. 1. Aliens visited Earth prior to the 4th century BC and influenced the development of ancient Chinese philosophy. Or 2. The concept of yin and yang is universal, since yin and yang describes the fundamental interdependencies of seemingly opposite forces, it may be a necessary existential understanding in some form in all sufficiently developed civilizations. The tapering of the two circles union into opposed and inf oh, that's gonna be infinitesimally I don't know that well, that's a bit of a I've never seen that word in my life. Small parts, the the finite uh, is the one logical way to represent this understanding and may have been developed independently by species other than humans. So this was the thing that I was interested by, I thought originally that they went to Earth. But it, this is older than the ones on Earth, so that's pretty interesting there. I, I think we read the alien rifle, because that's not part of the uh, facility, so we're going to skip that. But not the alien statue. Alien statue. This artifact is, is unpowered, suggesting it served as a ceremonial... Ra served as a... yeah, ceremonial rather than practical purpose. The pyramid resembles vines spiraling upwards toward the blue, the warm blue stone mounted above it. It may represent a plant found on the alien's homeworld. Ooh, a building of religious import, or even the gravitational pull of their home solar system. Because we don't know where all these aliens are from, after all. So, pretty, pretty good. This one. An ancient earth blade, an ancient earth blade dating back to the 13th century. Blood samples on the blade match the DNA of seven sep of seven. Yeah, match the DNA of seven separate heads of state from the period. 
This evidence supports the theory that the aliens are an ancient space space-born civilization engaged in the surreptitious study of less developed species. Cool. So they took the blade as like a souvenir. And we've read the Doomsday device. Holodra holographic projector. This device contains network apparatus and a holographic projection unit. It was lightly used as a communications relay, capturing and projecting the image of the user to remote to a remote location. There do not appear to be any other devices in range. Hmm. I don't really know what that's gonna do, but pretty these are all pretty interesting stuff. It gives us an idea of what the aliens are like and how complex their societies was must have been. Uh, before they probably went extinct. Nanobots. This was the one that was empty, the case that was empty, but it actually had really small nanobots inside. Scans show some form of advanced nanobot inside this seemingly empty case. Say, there we go. Uh, these bots are substantially smaller than any developed within the Federation, and it is not possible to ascertain their exact function it would, however, be unwise to release them. Yep, it probably would, because if they are deadly, then that's not going to end well. Organic matter particulator. This device contains a highly unstable radioactive isotope, likely to destroy all organisms exposed to it while leaving physical structures intact. Although it would function perfectly well as a weapon, it was more likely used to sterilize spaces for later inhabit inhabitation. Without instructions, it would be unwise to interact with it. Yep. I wasn't going to touch any of these, so... <laughs> Rudimentary tablet. This device shares so shares many similarities with the tablets used to, access, to, to gain access to the uh, alien facilities. Although its structure is rather less complex, it may have served a similar purpose, granting security access and storing relevant data, and was thus kept here as a form of legacy support. Which is just reminding me, there is one place in the Lost River that needs tablets to open that I haven't actually visited yet. So that could be a part of the next episode where I go through and explore places I haven't explored. Because I think I will do a couple episodes on that, maybe just one massive one, where uh, I go over the places I haven't explored. Track and implant. This construct is emitting a high bandwidth signal consistent with alien transmissions intercepted elsewhere. DNA on the exterior indicates it was once implanted inside one of the life forms indigenous to planet 4546b. Its size suggested that the subject was a Leviathan class organism. Beyond tracking and broadcasting its location, the implant may have also be, may have also recorded biological data on the subject. However, this data cannot be retrieved. So basically, I think this was either for the Sea Emperor, how they got the Sea Emperor, because it's all it's in storage now, so they obviously didn't need it. Or, on another case, it could have been for the Sea Dragon Leviathan, uh, because uh, because they're the main two that were this far down in the facility, um, and they're the main two that they were doing experiments on. Like, they weren't doing experiments on the Reaper or the Ghost Leviathans, really. Uh, they were kind of left, no, definitely not the Sea Dreader or the Reaper uh, or the Reefback Leviathans either. They're the more passive ones in the game. But, uh, either way, it is still interesting nonetheless. I think it's definitely one of the Sea Dragon or the Sea Emperor, but I'm more inclined to believe it might have been the Sea Emperor because they've obviously got them in containment now, so... And that's and that's been put in a storage shelf now, in a storage place, so... Interesting. Translation device. This device stores linguistic data from over 1,000 different languages. The core of this device may allow alien texts to be read and translated. Analysis on the onboard, sorry, oh, I thought I was going further down there. Analysis of the onboard data reveals a number of ancient Earth languages, and the term CBHC Live appears many times in the data's uh, in the device's data. Its import is unclear. This device seems to be configured to translate into the designer's language. It will not work the other way around. Okay, so you can't like use. Okay, so it's basically for them to translate us, not for us to translate them. Well, uh, I don't know if that's everything that we got from here, but I think there might be a couple more force field control. I I'll read this because we found this here. I know we found this. Ion cube fabricator. This device appears to be 
the origin of raw mineral of the raw mineral that forms the base of the iron cubes which power smaller alien sis is what the hell is wrong with my reading today sorry which power smaller alien systems lightly drawn power itself from the main thermal plant this device may represent an almost limitless source of energy so that the thermal plant basically that we saw powers all of the facilities probably I'm guessing um, alien robot we scan this this device is of alien origin although its design is relatively simple purpose its low threat level is its low threat level is at odds with the advanced technology apparently available to its designers suggesting it was intended more to patrol alien facilities and repair damaged infrastructure than deter invaders than deter invaders sorry. Uh, design despite its simple design this construction is quite elegant in its minimalization minimalism sorry for four electromagnetic legs allow it to transverse walls floors and ceilings with reasonable speed and appears to be replaceable internally there are moving few moving parts rendering this construct energy efficient and resistant to wear over time a rechargeable ion based power reserve ensures it continues to operate assessment immobilize and return to altera for mutual profit well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that it can continue to just repair the base and stuff because we need to go down there and if them robots stop the sea dragon might destroy the entire base who knows who knows okay so i think that's all of the alien data that i wanted to get out of the way for this episode however i do want to go into other areas that we haven't quite covered yet another area that i want to cover in this episode is the different leviathans that we've encountered since uh, doing the last lore update which includes the sea dragon leviathan obviously that we scanned as well as some of the information to do with the sea emperor so we're going to read the sea dragon now a colossal leviathan with reptilian features seen stalking the very heart of the volcanic crater which underpins life in this area the scan specimen measures 111 meters in length which is definitely the longest aggressive creature we've seen in the game the heat proof tissue tissue analysis reveals this specimen consists of one third inanimate materials focused around the chest area consumption and retention of mineral substances may explain the life form's ability to withstand extremes of temperature it even appears to be able to consume molten materials and expel them at its adversaries which is what we saw it basically flame throwed us like <laughs> It was uh, it was very aggressive towards us in the two times we've seen them. Forearms. Evolutionary distinct forearms are used for both propulsion and offensive purposes. Finance suggests evolutionary divergence from other species on the planet tens of millions of years ago. The sea dragon is likely one of the oldest species on the planet. I didn't even know that. I completely forgot about that fact. Um... Behavior as the largest carnivorous species encountered on 4546B, al almost everything is potential prey, with few substantial targets in the volcanic. Uh, with, sorry, with fewer. Yeah, with few substantial targets in the volcanic cave systems, the sea dragon likely ventures out into cooler waters to hunt other smaller leviathans, cornering them and then forcing them deeper where they are ultimately boiled alive which is definitely what happened to those reaper leviathan skeletons we saw this thing hunts reaper leviathans and reaper, Le reaper leviathans are no joke the sea dragon size and and the restrictions of the cave systems they inhabit suggest their population numbers are extremely low perhaps in the single digits while it is not unusual for larger predators to sustain lower populations it is possible the sea dragon's food sources have diminished over time. This species may be near an extinction. And as far as my knowledge goes, we've only seen two in the game. We've seen a skeleton of one, and we've seen an egg of one, but they're obviously both either not born, and one of them's one of them's dead, and one of them's not born. So there is not many, but there is two that are alive. Assessment: extreme threat, avoid in all circumstances yet we managed to scan it so 
pretty decent there. I was really happy with scanning all the Leviathans in the game. That was one of the things I set out to do at the beginning. There was, well, there's six. Well, there's there is six, but there's five here, and the Emperor you kind of get just naturally if you just scan the area when you're around there. I am gonna have a look really quickly for the um. What is this for the um? What you what you call them again? The Sea Emperor Leviathans. That was it. Oh, forgot to read this. Enzyme 42 project data. According to translated data logs, an indigenous leviathan species was found to produce a unique substance referred to as Enzyme 42, which in inhabited, inhibited the symptoms of the Cara bacterial infection in other indigenous life forms, I mean organisms. The specimen was captured and contained in purpose, a purpose-built habitat for further study. The alien researchers went to great lengths to provide for the life forms environmental needs including the import of interdependent flora and fauna via an on-site warp gate however its health quickly de deteriorated when quarantine was imposed all warp gates and force fields were sealed all attempts to develop the enzyme into a vaccine had been unsuccessful so that was part that's to do with the sea emperor and i've just seen there's a sea emperor one down there that will read to end to end off the video but basically, the virus that's affecting this planet, we, oh, I thought that was a computer speaking there for a second, sorry. Uh, but the virus that we've got and the, the rest of the planet's got in this game, they're trying to cure it using the Sea Emperor, but the Sea Emperor must be pretty old and might not be able to produce the enzyme very well. We're going to read two more here. We've got, wait, actually, we might, I'll check what that is afterwards. Kara Contagent Profile, which is what we've got basically in this game. The terminal contains extensive data regarding to the bacterial contagion identified as Cara. Discovery. First encounter during routine network expansion on outer worlds. Pandemic development. Network error resulted in routine quarantine procedure failure. Contagion was uploaded to and spread quickly through the core world. Confirmed deaths. 143 billion individuals. That is a lot that is more than anyone that's like that number is higher than any amount of people that have ever lived on earth i know we have obviously currently seven billion but if even if everyone that's ever died on the planet was alive right now that is still i'm pretty sure it's still lower than that number that is that's is a lot of deaths bacterial mechanis mechanisms attaches to healthy living cells and mutates the basic genetic structure symptoms stage one gradual immune system failure stage two green skin lesions and flu-like symptoms. Stage 3, unpredictable alterations to biological structure. Stage 4, complete shutdown of executive function. Emergency steps taken, core worlds quarantined, bacterial samples distributed to isolated disease research facilities for vaccine development, treatment, procedure unknown. So yeah, we've actually seen the disease research facility. I'm pretty sure that's the one on the Lost River. I think I didn't really have a name for it, but there's that one. There's the thermal plant. So the basically it goes the enforcement platform is probably the one you'll find first. Then there's the disease research facility, the thermal plant, and then the primary containment facility. They're the main four alien places in this game. Next up, Sea Emperor Leviathan research data. Specimen size categories have been adjusted upward accommodate this species feeding and digestion alien research data indicates that despite its size this species feeds entirely on microorganisms it filters from the water which themselves depend on a complicated ecosystem of plant and animal life reproduction large ovary like organs are carried in the creatures middle section suggesting that like other species on this planet, it produces eggs. However, internal scar tissue indicate possible infertility. Enzyme 42, which we read about before, could be the cure. The Emperor ma manufactures Enzyme 42 within its stomach cavity to break down its food and will occasionally expel into the surrounding waters. The substance was found to found to neutralize the effects of the bacterium and its presence in the ecosystem today would explain how life on the planet survived the outbreak. It would remain to be explained 
by what mechanism the enzyme is being delivered. I think it's the peepers, and I'm pretty sure there's other information that say that as well. Health. Comparative analysis of size and metalli um, metabolic rates uh, indicates the specimen the specimen captured by the researchers was approximately 1,600 years old, for it was old. Extensive internal and external scar tissues suggested it lived well in the excess of the peak lifespan for its species. Assessment While an, a healthy specimen, Empress specimen, may have held some potential as a cure, it is likely any research subject survived quarantine procedures. So basically, it's the last of its kind. Right, uh, I think we're going to leave it there for this episode, but thank you all so much for watching this law uh, of Subnautica, like the law video. We do law videos occasionally on this channel, I think there's about three now if you want to count this one. Um, so we don't do too many, but I did want to go over because we scanned a lot of stuff at that place, a lot. Next episode, I'm going to focus on finding and making the thing to hatch, I think it's a hatching enzymes for the sea emperor's uh, eggs. We've got the portal systems all up and running now, so it shouldn't be too bad. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I will see you all in the next video I make. Bye.